Harvey Weinstein was fired by his own company after the New York Times reported sexual harassment allegations against him over three decades, which he denies. Then came Ronan Farrow's devastating New Yorker article in which three women on the record say the movie mogul raped them, which again he denies. Now, more accusers are emerging just about every day, not just actresses, but journalists like Lauren Sivan. And um, that's where he cornered me in this vestibule and um, leaned in and, and tried to kiss me, which I immediately rebuffed and said, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? And he immediately um, exposed himself and, you know, began pleasuring himself. And I just stood there dumbfounded. <laughs> Weinstein is a major Democratic donor, and it took nearly six days for Barack Obama to say he and Michelle were disgusted and, quote, any man who demeans and degrades women in such fashion needs to be condemned and held accountable regardless of wealth or status. And for Hillary Clinton to say she was shocked and appalled by Harvey Weinstein. It's good Clinton broke her silence. Of course, it is too bad she was one of the last to do so. I just don't understand why the day this came out she wasn't on Twitter condemning it. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. The fact that the Clintons and the Obamas embraced him, I think, is a dark mark on their record. The former first lady finally spoke about it publicly on CNN. What was your reaction when you heard the news about Harvey Weinstein? I was, I was just sick. I was shocked. I was appalled. Um, it was something that was just intolerable in every way. Joining us now to analyze the coverage, Guy Benson, political editor of townhall.com. Jessica Tarloff, senior director at Bustle, both are Fox News contributors, and Aaron McPike, White House correspondent for Independent Journal Review. Fareed Zakaria didn't ask Hillary Clinton the obvious question, what took you so long? He didn't. Uh, he did ask her about giving back some of the money that she'd taken from Weinstein, and she said she's going to bundle that into her yearly charitable giving. It's unclear where that would go or if it's on top of her normal 10 percent, as she described. I do think that there's a question for Democrats more broadly. Is the party going to divest from this tainted money from Harvey Weinstein? Do you the feel DNC, like the media are pressing that question or kind of going easy on the DNC? Well, so type? the DNC put out this ridiculous charade of a policy, which was they're going to give away 10 percent of it to groups devoted to electing right. Democrats, which right. is basically the DNC. And they got some positive headlines for it saying, oh, they're giving away the money. Um, if the media is that easily fooled, then shame on them. There should be more pressure on that front. Jessica, I'm glad that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama are now speaking out against yeah. Harvey Weinstein. But it's hard to avoid the conclusion they were being uber cautious because Weinstein is not just a big dem time Democratic donor. He threw fundraisers for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the actual cash amount that came directly from Harvey Weinstein was quite minimal comparatively, but he certainly has been a great uh, friend of the Democratic Party and liberal causes. I mean, even his first ridiculous letter said, I'm going to focus my attention now on the NRA, <laughs> like as if, you know, we want him with us in any way whatsoever. Um, to the larger point here, I think that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton were late to the game. And I think that more that the issue is not what we're going to do with the money, but what we're going to do actually with the ideology, because I believe strongly in the values of the Democratic Party being champions of women. I believe our policies are better for women across the board. And if we're not the first to the fire on issues like this, uh, I think that it's hard for us to stand up there and say that. Now, Republicans are sometimes reluctant when a conservative gets into this type of trouble. But what Harvey Weinstein did, and of course he was kicked out of the Academy Awards yesterday, should cut across partisan lines, right? Yeah, it absolutely should. No, I don't think six days is all that long, but I do know that people who tend to defend Clinton on television, on Twitter, in the press, were waiting for a response and were kind of frustrated that the, the Clinton team wasn't giving them one on There time. were stories about what, when is Hillary going to speak about this? If it had been some uh, big Republican donor, you, it would have taken six minutes, six hours at the most. Well, look, that's true, but Hillary Clinton is no longer running for president, and people do want her to go away, and yeah. President Obama is no longer president, so, All you know. Right, but she is on a book tour. All right, so and how does NBC let Ronan Farrow, who got a number of women to go on the record, three of them accusing Harvey Weinstein of rape, which, again, he denies anything non-consensual. Farrow is a special correspondent with NBC, former MSNBC host. Uh, how do you let him walk away with that scoop? So as a disclosure, I'm friends with Ronan, and I thought that he gathered, based on just what we know publicly, he gathered a lot of factual, reportable information 
on this story over many months. Eight women on the record. The pushback he got internally from NBC is shocking, and we've seen the dribs and drabs coming out uh, from within the building. People angry at NBC at their own network for basically giving up this scoop and chasing him off to the New Yorker, uh, which has very high editorial standards, yeah, and they ran yeah. the piece. So I think this looks terrible for NBC News, and I do want to very quickly give some credit to Rachel Maddow, which I don't often do. You played the clip at the top of the mm -hmm. show. She asked him and pressed him on that issue on an NBC owned network yes. good for her it was the elephant in the room and she didn't let it go I just want to play for you Jessica uh, one piece of audio tape this is something Ronan Farrow had months ago because there's some dispute about how many of the women did he have on the record at the time he was still doing the story for NBC so this is Amber Badalana Gutierrez uh, a model who uh, two years ago had said that she was groped by Harvey Weinstein the day before she wore a wire in a New York police sting let's listen Please come in now, and one minute, and if you want to leave, when the guy comes with my jacket, you Why used to be you touch my breast? Please, I'm sorry, just come on, I'm used to that. But are you used Please. to that? Yes, come in. Here's no, but I'm not used to that. I won't do it again. Come on, sit here. Sit here for a minute, please. No, I don't want to. He admits the groping on the tape. How is that by itself not a story for NBC? I, I don't know, and I don't know what Cy Vance was thinking either when he declined to prosecute. He's the Manhattan, Manhattan District Attorney. Manhattan District Attorney. Yeah. Attorney, yeah. But adding on to what Guy was talking about, NBC also got scooped on the Access Hollywood tape because they waited Which on they this own. with the Trump <laughs> Right. Team. Right. Uh, so clearly there are some problems there at the top at NBC about their decision you know, to not go forward with these huge stories and stories that the American people need to be hearing about, whether it's the President of the United States of America or it's someone that's running Hollywood. So I've worked at both NBC and CNN, both of their news departments. And the Access Hollywood tape, you know, I, I don't know that we can say that the actual news department knew of the Access Hollywood tape. I, I think that's, that's up for debate. But look, networks kill stories all of the time. It is frustrating at every network. CNN does not have a leg to stand on to go after NBC for not running that story. And my, my suspicion is that it had a lot more to do with the fact that they thought, oh, Ronan Far Farrow grew, grew up in Hollywood and he is young, and they probably wanted to make him a star but didn't necessarily believe in his journalistic chops. There's a lot of that that could have been going on. Why do you well, why even know that he gave him a show, though? And I mean, Ronan Farrow said that he had to go out and spend his own money to for do some of this video for a crew because yeah. NBC wouldn't support him. Don't hire him in the first place if you don't think he has the chops to do it. Just briefly, why do you say CNN doesn't have a leg to stand on? Because I know they kill stories. I've seen it happen. All right. Um, we'll have to come back to that sometime. <laughs> uh, in fairness, NBC News President Noah Oppenheim uh, told his staff, and the network put this out, that it was offensive that anyone would think NBC was covering up for a powerful person and that, in his view, Ronan Farrow's story wasn't ready for prime time at the time he was dealing with NBC. But, of course, weeks later, this incredibly well-documented piece shows up in the New Yorker. All right, so do you think that too many journalists have perpetuated the myth of Harvey Weinstein, the mighty movie mogul, the guy who makes stars, the guy who wins Oscars, while basically looking away from conduct that we're hearing more and more was an open secret in New York and Hollywood? Yeah, and, you know, one element of this story that I've been fascinated by is the late-night comedians who jumped all over stories about, oh, I don't know, people at our uh, network uh, who got into trouble along these lines. And who speak out against Trump regularly. And, and Trump yeah. regularly. So, look, this is obviously harassment a problem not just uh, in Hollywood but elsewhere. It's the gusto and the immediacy with which some of these people went after in the media and in comedy after some targets but not others. And some of the excuses now from Jimmy Kimmel and Seth Meyers explaining why they pulled their punches, to me, do not hold water at all. And I think it's, there's some human nature here. Going after friends and going after people who are powerful in your orbit is difficult. That's the truth to power. Yeah. And That's by the tough. way, NBC has business relationships with NBC Universal Pictures and Bravo with Weinstein's companies and that sort of thing. Now, it, it is hard, though, to nail down and document these kinds of things where it's Absolutely. often two people in a room. And I'm not being critical in any way of the, of the women, and particularly those who are young and aspiring actresses for not speaking out, but you have to have people who are willing to go on the record before you can report these kind of explosive charges. Right. That's why everyone on both sides of the aisle should be praising these women who did find the courage to do that. And yes, it took some of them a few years to make sure that they had established their careers and they had the legs to stand on to do it. But uh, the audio came out of court. Courtney Love back in 2005 saying, don't work for Harvey Weinstein. This is what's going to happen to you. And CAA banned her, lifetime ban. So when people blame the women, and I have been on other panels about this, 
where uh, my opponent has come out and said, these women knew, Meryl Streep knew, you know, yeah. Jane Fonda admitted she knew a year ago. Don't you dare talk about those women and put them down for what they did when you see what happened to a Courtney Love. And this sets up my question to you, which is New York Times columnist Jim Rutenberg wrote uh, about this, uh, that there's a network of uh, very aggressive public relations people and lawyers who guard the secrets of those who they work for and that they keep this stuff out of public view and then only major news organization, New York Times, New Yorker, which have lawyers and factors, can take this on. Well, that's right. And look, a lot of very wealthy entities or people, when they foresee a crisis happening, will bring on a public relations firm so that they can fend off this sort of thing, which obviously we know happened with Harvey Weinstein before he was trying to yeah. stop the New York Times story. And by the way, Harvey Weinstein on the cover of Time magazine uh, looking like a villain, which is pretty much how he's been cast. Producer, predator, pariah.